today I'm going to move on to looking at the transport equations through our non-porous or dense membrane material. And then at the end, we're going to have a look at how to design uh, a fully mixed flow membrane system. So now if we have our non-porous membranes, what happens is we have, instead of the material just passing through the pores, we actually have an absorption onto the membrane surface. Then we have the material that passes through that dense membrane by our diffusion. And then we have to actually dissolve the material on the other side of the membrane. So we now have essentially extra steps in our transport through our membrane. And regardless of whether we're, we're using it to separate a gas or a liquid, we can still look at using a solution diffusion model to get this adsorption desorption and the transport through the membrane is still this fixed law, the same as we looked at before. So if we, first of all, think about looking at liquids going for our dense membrane, what we can do is describe some, some key concentrations. So we have CIF, which is the concentration of the bulk of our feed. And then this moves by diffusion essentially to the surface of our dense membrane. And here, we've identified that as C prime, or on the surface. But then we actually have our adsorption onto the membrane surface. And the concentration of the adsorbed material is this lower CI value. And then as we move through our membrane, we just go through with diffusion by Fick's law. And then as we come to the other side of our membrane, we have our concentration absorbed onto our membrane surface in equilibrium with our C prime, which is our dissolved concentration by the surface. And then we have diffusion out into our bulk liquid uh, of our permeate side, or our CIP. So what we need to have extra for this case is some kind of model for our absorption-desorption part. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can actually look at using uh, equilibrium partition coefficient. Okay? <clears throat> and what we can just do is write that essentially as the ratio of the absorbed material to the non-absorbed material. And then for different materials of membrane and for different liquids, we can essentially look up and find values of this partition coefficient for the dissolved onto the surface. So if we now start to build our model up across our whole membrane, we have our partition coefficient on our feed side for the absorption <laughs> on the feed side. We can also write an identical partition coefficient on our permeate side for the desorption. So again, it's the concentration of the absorbed material divided by the concentration of the desorbed material. And then we can represent the transport through that dense membrane in terms of Flick's law, which is the diffusivity divided by the thickness of the membrane. And then because it's liquids, it's times by the concentration of the absorbed concentrations on the feed side to the permeate side. So because the 
the absorbed concentrations are generally not easily calculated, <coughs> what we can do is we can make the assumption that the partition coefficients on both the feed and the permeate side of our membrane are very similar to each other. And what that does, that allows us to combine our two equations for the absorption process with our Flick's law equation to essentially get the flux across our membrane, but in terms of the concentrations of the free solution on the surface of the membrane. And then if you remember back to last week, we can make the same assumption that the, the mass transfer resistance to and from the membrane surface in the boundary layer is very small in comparison to their actual resistance of the absorption and the, and the flow through the membrane. So we can essentially ignore the transport uh, in the boundary layer. So we can take our concentration difference to be the concentration in the bulk feed to the concentration in the bulk permeate side. And if we remember back to our definition of the, of the flux, which is essentially flux equals the permeativity divided by the membrane thickness times the driving force. We can immediately see from here that our permeativity is essentially the diffusivity for our membrane times by that equilibrium partition coefficient. Okay? So we can also make the same model for gases. So in this case, instead of having that partition coefficient, what we can have is we can actually use Henry's law to represent the absorption. And you should hopefully remember Henry's law as essentially relates the dissolved or absorbed concentration to the partial pressure in the free gas. So here, in this case, we've got our partial pressure of the free gas at the surface of the membrane in our equilibrium with that absorbed concentration. <clears throat> and we can use exactly the same form using Henry's law <clears throat> on our permeate side. And then again, we're using Flick's law for the, for the absorbed concentrations to represent the flux through our dense membrane. <coughs> so exactly the same as with the liquid case, we can combine our Henry's law for the absorption with our Flick's law for the flux through the membrane so that we can write that flux in terms of the partial pressures on the membrane surface. And again, we can ignore that mass transfer in the fluid boundary layer as very small in comparison to the change. <clears throat> so what we can do is write our flux in terms of the partial pressure of our bulk feed gas and the partial pressure of our bulk permeate gas. Again, if we remember back to that definition of the flux, this time we can see that our permeability is given by the diffusivity 
through our dense membrane times by Henry's law constant for that particular gas membrane surface system. To actually looking how we can design a membrane, now we have this knowledge of how to calculate the permeability through the membranes, how we can actually calculate and design a membrane. So we can, we can define a separation factor exactly the same way as we define a separation factor for distillation. Okay? Which essentially is our, the permeate concentration of one component over the retentate concentration of that component divided by that same ratio for our second component. So the only difference is, is unlike distillation, our X and our Y fractions are not in equilibrium because membranes are not an equilibrium process. They're a kinetic process. So if we think about our membrane system, so if we have no sweet gas, then essentially our ratio of our, our permeate concentrations must be equal to the ratio of the fluxes of each of those components through the membrane. Okay? Because that's just the material that's passed through the membrane. So that allows us to sort of very simply write this bottom equation for the ratio of our permeate compositions and the ratio of the fluxes. So if we think back to our actual definition of the, the fluxes, we can write that for each of our two components. So in this case we're going for a, a gas membrane separator. So we've got our flux is our permeability over the thickness of the membrane times by the difference in the partial pressure and of course the partial pressure is given by the mole fraction times by the total pressure. So what we can do is take these two equations and essentially write that as a ratio of the fluxes. So we get a term for the ratio of the fluxes in terms of the permeability of our two components and essentially the difference of the mole fractions of those two components times the pressure of the feed and the pressure of the permeate. So if we, if we try and move and think about a, a more ideal case of our system, an ideal case, so a, a membrane that sort of works with a very high efficiency and is a, is a very good membrane, we would have essentially a high pressure on the feed side to force our material through, and then essentially a very low pressure on the permeate side because that, that permeate pressure is essentially working against our feed pressure. But if that permeate pressure is very low, that means that it's essentially negligible in comparison to our feed pressure. So what we can do is just cancel our permeate pressure out. And then if we remember that our ratio of um, <clears throat> our fluxes is the ratio of our permeate con ratio of our permeate concentrations. We've already got our <coughs> feed retentate side concentrations in the X's. So if we rearrange this equation into our separation factor equation, what we get out is just the ratio 
of the, perme the permeabilities for the two components through that membrane. Okay? So that's just confirming our ideal separation factor that we've been working for, just looking at the flows through the membrane. Okay? So in this case, just to note that is different to this, which is our general separation factor, just put a little asterisk for that, for our ideal separation factor. So now if we go back and think, well, okay, so nothing we ever design is ideal. So that basically means that our permeate pressure is not measurable because there will be some permeate pressure in our system. So we can't simplify this equation. But what we can do is still rearrange this equation to put into our expression for the separation factor. And what we find if we do that is, first of all, we get the ratio of the permeabilities, which is the ideal separation factor, basically multiplied by this modifier. And this sort of modifying part is our real system based on our actual design of the membrane unit. Okay, so we've got our ideal separation just through the membrane multiplied by our modifier for our design of the unit. And in this case, what we have is we've got the ratio of our retentate side and our permeate side for one of our components. And we've also just introduced this term, which is the pressure ratio, which is essentially our permeate pressure divided by our feed pressure. <clears throat> but this expression is a bit uh, cumbersome and where do we know? We don't know the values of our retentate and permeate side. Um, that's what we're trying to find. So <clears throat> what we can do <coughs> then actually rearrange this by substituting <coughs> again the equation for the actual separation factor back in and then what we can get is this expression here for the separation factor which now only depends upon the separation factor itself our feed side of our membrane <coughs> and the pressure ratio. And we can either solve this expression iteratively for, a, for the separation factor, <clears throat> or you'll see it will come on to, you can actually solve that as a, it's actually just a quadratic equation. Okay? <clears throat> so all we've done is add on this extra term for the actual design unit of the membrane. And this holds for all membrane systems regardless of the actual design or style of the unit. So when I say the design or style of a unit, what I'm referring to is a module flow pattern. And there's basically four different module flow patterns. Um, you'd probably be unsurprised to basically think that they're kind of the same as heat exchanger design. Uh, we essentially have a perfect mixing case where what we have is everything on, comes in on the feed side and then we've got a constant concentration across the membrane because everything is mixed and the concentration we take out in the retentate is exactly the same as the concentration inside the membrane. So basically think like a, a CSTR, everything inside is the same as the concentration we're taking out. <clears throat> then we have a countercurrent flow and a co-current flow. So they are like heat exchangers. So we have feed through the retentate flowing in one direction and our permeate being taken out basically on the same side of our output in our countercurrent flow. And then in the co-current flow, 
we have our feed going dry with and the permeate being taken out on the same side as we contact. Okay? <clears throat> so the main differences between these two is that you essentially have your highest concentration of permeate at the end mixed with your lowest concentration of the retentate, so your driving force is lowest, whereas in your counterfluent case, what you've got is you've got the highest concentration of the permeate aligned with the highest concentration at the feed, so you've got a more constant driving force across that membrane. And then the final case is the cross flow. Basically, <laughs> what that means is, is as your feed passes to your retentate, you're essentially drawing off your concentration in the permeate at each step as you're moving along. <clears throat> and with all these designs, for a given cut, so if you remember the cut from last week, which is the ratio of the permeate flow to feed flow. For given cut, these flow patterns essentially significantly affect the actual separation you can do, and therefore they separate, or they, they change and affect the membrane area. So there will be an optimum membrane design for a particular, for a particular system. <coughs> So I'm going to go through an example of uh, the equations for designing a perfectly mixed membrane system. Um, <clears throat> the reason I picked a perfectly mixed membrane system is this is the only system that you can actually have an explicit analytical equation for, the countercurrent, the co-current and the cross flow all essentially give you a, a, an iterative solution or a numerical integral to solve. Okay? So if we think about a perfectly mixed membrane, just like every other system, what we can do is take a mass balance over our, <coughs> our membrane. So our amount of the component A that goes in at the feed is the amount that comes out in the permeate plus the amount that comes out in the retentate. We also have our definition of the cut, essentially our ratio of the permeate flow rate to the feed flow rate, which means we can also define 1 minus the cut, i.e. the flow rate of the retentate to the feed. And we combine our mass balance with our definition of the cut and basically generate an equation for our mass balance over the membrane for our concentration of the retentate in terms of concentration of feed, concentration of the permeate, and our cut. So that basically gives us three equations for our perfectly mixed membrane system. We have one, which is our mass balance for the perfectly mixed membrane. The second one, which is our definition of the separation factor. And our third equation is the one that we defined for any membrane system, which we essentially got from the ratio of the fluxes. Okay? So we just have three equations now, and so long as we specify a value of the cut, which is very typical to do for membranes, we have three equations and three unknowns. Yep. The three unknowns essentially being the separation factor, the the, the composition of the permeate and the composition of the retentate. So that allows us to actually get the compositions out of our membrane system. So if we combine these equations together, so what we can do is we can eliminate 
our retentate concentration to get as an expression for our permeate concentration. And this actually produces a quadratic equation form. So we have our permeate composition, and that's just dependent on our ideal separation factor, our feed composition, of course we know our feed composition because it's our feed, and the cut, and our R, which is our pressure ratio. <coughs> so, so long as we know those key bits of information about our membranes, we can get our composition of the permeate. So within the exam, I ask you to calculate information for a perfectly mixed membrane. I will give you that quadratic equation. Okay? And then as soon as we've used that to actually find our permeate flow rates, we can go back to our definition of the flux, where we can have our flux in terms of our actual flow rate of the permeate and calculate the area of the membrane that we actually need for that particular cut and that particular separation factor to give us that permeate concentration output. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. <clears throat> okay. Well, the, the tutorial question that we're going to do after this basically asks you to do that question. So that will help you think more about the equations. <clears throat> so that's it. Um, we did non-porous materials today. We looked at a fully mixed membrane. Um, <clears throat> You'll notice in the notes there's also the derivation of the set of equations for the cross-flow membrane case. That's, that relates to the D1 question. Um, I had intended to do that um, because originally I was expecting to be here last Tuesday and tomorrow, but I'm not, so I'm not going to cover it but it's not on the exam anyway. Um, so, if you want to look at it for interest, you may look at cross-flow membranes, uh, but you don't need to. Okay. Um, and also, thanks for a surprisingly large number of people still being here at like <laughs> half past four on the last week of term. So, thanks for actually attending. So.